Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I'm going to try out my new model of the Astra Rocket 3 launcher. And of course recently it had a mishap, but uh, we'll see first of all that whether it can get to orbit normally with the numbers that I have. And then we'll see what happens if I like turn an engine off. But here we have a test payload. This is just a procedural tank with avgas in it. It's 60 kilograms. This is a little bit complicated because I don't have a good number for how much it can carry. On, on uh, Wikipedia, <laughs> Wikipedia says it's 25 to 150 kilograms, but of course that would depend, I mean, that's a pretty big range. And so since we're trying to find its capacity, it should be a number, not a whole bunch of numbers. On the website for Astra, they seem to be talking about a completely different rocket as far as payload capacity because they're talking about uh, payloads of up to 500 kilograms to up to 500 kilometers mid-inclination orbits, but that's a bigger rocket. This rocket would not be able to do 500 kilograms. So yeah, that's and uh, they also uh, specify a totally different payload fairing that's 64 inches in diameter, which is bigger than the one on Rocket 3. So the, the website is basically zero help as far as this launcher is concerned. Uh, they did uh, produce a media kit for uh, LV0006 and that has the information on the thrust of the engines, the timing of the staging, so we know the timing of how long each stage is, and we have the overall length and diameter. And we also know that's kerosene oxygen uh, for both stages and the first stage has electric turbo pumps so the upper stage is pressure fed so we know that information we don't know the dry masses we don't know the specific impulse the efficiency and so that leaves a lot of question mark and we don't know the payload capacity at all so I've made it 60 kilograms because with all that I can tell this is the best I think we can do from Kodiak and uh, maybe we'll up it if it turns out that this has extra. This will be the first full orbital test of it. I've uh, fired certain things already just to check. But we start off with the th second stage. There aren't many good photos of this. Um, as far as I can tell, it looks something like this. Um, and then the ether engine looks something like that. And that's the best I can do. I don't know. It's... Uh, there's like one photo of it and that's what it seems to look like. I don't really know how it fits in the inner stage. So what I've got is uh, this. So it goes on like that. There's a special node that's facing the direction that this needs it to be facing. And then we can put the fairing on. But yeah, there's a lot I don't know about this. And they change the upper portion of it uh, often with each version of their launcher. So. Yeah, if you look at uh, Rocket 1, it looks very different than this. But uh, roughly speaking, that's what we've got. And then we're going to have to fix staging down there. And then we have the Delphin engines down here, which will consume electric charge as well. So there's electric charge in this tank. Now, if you're using a procedural payload, uh, whatchamacallit, payload adapter, then that's fine because there is a controller in the second stage as well as electric charge. So that can control stuff all on its own. Uh, the size of the second stage is actually based on the stage timing and the thrust of the engine. So basically I made the upper stage the right size so that it would contain the propellant necessary to run the upper stage engine 40 mile time that it runs for. So that's the best I can do. Okay, and but as far as RCS thrusters, I have no idea. So I didn't put any. So basically, we've got the five engines there. You might want to turn them, but it's fine. They are arrayed like this, which is interesting. So once the first stage goes out, then it stages the fairing, then it stages the inner stage, then it stages the ether engine. Right now I have that at 342 vacuum. It's 3.3 kilonewtons, so it's a cute little engine. I didn't make it very complicated looking. I didn't make these very complicated looking either because I didn't have a good, very good photo of them. So uh, they get 28.5 kilonewtons at sea level, 31.8 kilonewtons in vacuum, 
312 vacuum specific impulse and this was based only on comparing it with the Rutherford engine basically. So if you can imagine, well, what's the thrust to weight ratio that we want to have when one engine, this uh, delta V is wrong, by the way. I don't know why, but I know it's wrong. Uh, the delta V is actually closer to what the stock has. Um, that's the delta V. And again, we're going into a polar orbit, so we need more than the 9,500. We don't get any benefit from Earth's rotation or anything like that. So keep that in mind. Uh, so if you imagine one engine going out, you'll see that based on our sea level thrust to weight ratio, right now we would basically hover, right? We'll lose 0.25, and so we'll have just above one, which seemed to be the situation, right? Uh, to do that, I actually had to give this tank more fuel than uh, the burn time that they specified. So they uh, specified for the recent test a uh, two minute and 50 second burn time. We've got obviously more than that, and that is just to weigh it down. And uh, it's fair to have a little bit more fuel. Probably for heavier payloads, they would have more fuel. So uh, there is the possibility of more structural mass, but then it can't get the delta V to get to the orbit that it needs to. So uh, there's different ways of weighing it down, but this is uh, just adding more fuel to it is probably the best way. Both stages have a little bit of extra time beyond what they specified for the test. So this is Astra Rocket 3. The top fairing is probably ought to be oriented differently. Uh, they should be probably 9 degrees from where they are right now. It's possible that the bottom part of the fairing is actually not supposed to be part of the fairing. Taking a look at some photos, that that's actually part of the second stage, which would be nicer, really. Right now, the second stage is sort of floating in the interstage. I don't know how it connects to other stuff, but it's possible that there's a cylindrical portion of what is currently the fairing that's actually part of the second stage. So forgive me for that. We will fix that at some other point. But to be honest, they're probably going to make changes to the rocket anyway. So we are at Kodiak, Alaska, and we will go to a 180 degree heading. OK, so ignition. Uh, it does this when the launch clamps are on, but once I release them, the plumes reset to the right height. I don't get it, really. So, uh, it looks vigorous. There's not much lag to it, so... New space companies, do not roll your rocket like that. That would be bad. We're already past the speed of sound, by the way. Gives you an idea how fast it's supposed to happen. So again, the thrust is right. To a very close call, the mass of the rocket is right. Because we know when it hovers, right? But that's the mass of the rocket overall. How it's all distributed is different. The efficiency of the engines is a question mark, but it sort of has to have this sort of efficiency to get anywhere near the payload capacity that seems to be indicated, but again, there is a range, and it's not particularly clear. You say 25 to 150 kilograms, some of that seems aspirational, and some of it is dependent on launch location, so it's complicated. I'm sure people will ask, I will do the Firefly Alpha as well, I've got the payload user's guide for that, so that will happen. There's more numbers in that, thankfully. The upper stage is fairly small, so it does get to fairly high g-forces at the end of the burn here. Though we could reserve some of the fuel that I have here. Again, they indicate about 19 seconds less burn time than I have. Okay, fairing set, stage set, and ignition. Again, we don't have any RCS on here right now. It seems like we have more than we need. Um, we could have reserved some in the first stage to set the burn time correct. But so we can carry more than 60 kilograms. Let's see that. This engine does gimbal. The plume seems to be a little bit high. 
I probably should have some struts going up too. Now given this engine 10 ignitions, it is pressure fed so it doesn't seem unreasonable that I'd have at least that. I'm gonna have to review where the bottom node of this engine is. That might be what's messing things up here. We're a bit lopsided, but that's already orbit. We could circularize that apoapsis or something. We have plenty of delta V left. And 90 degree orbit right now. And it looks like fuel wise. Oh, I don't know. I thought this was 60 kilograms. Is it only 54? Oh, um, no, the 60 kilograms is like that. So we have about. 27 kilograms of fuel so if we take that into consideration maybe we can do 80 kilograms of payload 150 seems to be pushing it from kodiak but i'm not sure again there's lots of variables let's take a look at what happens when we shut off an engine on the pad it seems that for this launch though that uh, they were attempting, they were trying to go to a 70 degree inclination, not a 90, 90 degree inclination. So that would have been mildly, mildly easier. Their altitude was higher though, 415 kilometers. Well, I'll action group, let's say this engine here. Toggle engine. Well, we gotta watch out for that water tower too, huh? Okay, well, uh, let me just get smart ASS on this topic. Okay. So, ignition. Oh. And... Launch and then one engine off. It doesn't really do a tilty thing. Uh, Smart ASS was able to hold it without a tilty thing. And it stays hovering for less time. I feel like we should burden it more. Because cause it was pretty close to the ground for an extended period of time here. It's like this has... This is lighter. And again, the thrust of the engine is like the one number that they give us. So that's one thing we know. Since this, if this one engine out, the stage would be able to last longer, right? But it didn't. Well, I mean, they terminated. No, no they, they. I guess they manually shut, manually shut down the engines and terminated it. But yeah, it could have tried to compensate for going for longer. Well, you can note the timing to get to Mach 1. That's Mach 1 now at 1 minute and 40 seconds. I've gone a little bit steeper than I probably normally would have. Well, I mean, <laughs> should we compensate? It's a tough call. They, they shut it down by here. Let's just try and come. Let's, uh, let's try our best to get to orbit. How about that? But theirs hovered for a much longer time, I think. It could have been some other damage that we don't know about. Could even be that more than one engine was underperforming. Well, one thing is the batteries that run the electro electric turbo pumps. Maybe they can only last for a certain amount of time. Okay, so fairings. Separation. Ignition. Yeah. I mean, here we can get to orbit with the 60 kilogram payload, but if the batteries were damaged somehow, that's another thing. If they only have a limited amount of time, you know, we extended the duration of the other four engines, but maybe that's not possible. But here we will get to orbit. And they're, they were going to a 70, they could have been carrying a heavier payload though. They were carrying some unspecified non-deployable space force payload okay and shut down 
actually a somewhat nicer orbit than we did the first time. But, yep, well, take it or leave it. So I'll, I'll link the parts in the, it's part of the small rockets pack. I'll link the whole thing in the video description. This is only like 10 megabytes of that. But, yep, it'll be added to the small rockets pack. And if you guys can give me some more information about uh, Astra's Rocket 3 before it changes on us, uh, I'll be much obliged because there wasn't too much out there. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.